Okay, so for the sake of better understanding kind of some of the subtleties and intricacies of the adaptive uh, immune component, we want to make a distinction between the different types of antigens that the body encounters. Um, these are classified as either exogenous antigens, exo meaning external. So these are things that would be the body detects that are outside of its own cells, uh, bacteria certainly, um, but also mm -hmm. viruses. Um, these would be extracellular microbes, and so the particles or portions of them that are recognized by the immune system as foreign are then called exogenous antigens. Um, some cases the body will recognize proteins or molecules as foreign that are on the surfaces of their own cells, um, but, but get there because of an infection or some other abnormality within the cell. So those are called endogenous antigens. So a virus is a great example, a virus that gets inside of a cell and then directs synthesis of its own mm. proteins, which then become inserted in the host cell membrane. Uh, again, would be an endogenous antigen. And we'll see why this makes a difference with respect to how, the, um, how those infections are handled by the various classes of lymphocytes. Another um, important example but not directly related to infection is this concept of autoantigens. Um, so a normal cell normally then has uh, epitopes or um, proteins that it displays on its surface. These are called autoantigens because they are normal, um, but if the cell or if the body recognizes those mistakenly as foreign, that can lead to important diseases and conditions. Uh, those are actually covered in I think the next chapter on some autoimmune diseases. But we're going to focus primarily on the exogenous and endogenous antigens in this lecture. <clears throat> okay. So how are those recognized? How does the body go about um, detecting those and then responding to antigens, things that it deems as foreign? Well, cells in your body have proteins termed major histocompatibility complex proteins proteins. Um, that's a rather long name and as you'll guess it really these were discovered because of their role and as a major mechanism for rejection in tissue and organ transplants. So whenever you see MHC we're just referring to these types of protein complexes. Um, these are located on the membrane of immune cells as well as in fact every cell in the body that's nucleated, so that would be with exception of red blood cells. So every nucleated cell has this type of class called class 1 MHC, or major histocompatibility. And this is what they kind of look like. They have a transmembrane portion here, so this would be very hydrophobic. And then they have portions that extend outward from the cell, and it's the very pocket at the top then that's involved in binding to antigens. So all cells, except red blood cells, have this MHC class 1. MHC class 2 is a related type of protein complex. You'll notice, though, that it has two transmembrane components. Um, and these have a slightly different role in immunity. And in fact, they are found um, primarily on professional, what we call professional antigen-presenting immune cells or APCs. These are cells that engulf, that recognize and engulf foreign particles or microbes, digest them, and then present those on the surfaces of the cell, the little parts, little trophies, um, to alert the rest of the immune system of what they found. So again, the major role of the MHC protein complex is to bind and position antigens which have been captured and present them to the immune system. Um, it's important to know though that these are not going to bind proteins or bugs that may just happen to be outside of the cell. The only way they get onto these MHC complexes is because they're loaded or they're attached to MHC from within the cell and we'll show you how that works. Okay. So don't confuse these with antibodies though even though both bind antigens. So these are entirely different. Okay, so the MHC molecules um, acquire the epitopes 
while the MHC molecules are still within the cytoplasm of the cell that produces them. And there's going to be different processes depending upon whether those antigens are endogenous or exogenous. After they are attached or loaded onto the MHC molecules, they then move to the cell surface and attach in the membrane by either that single or dual transmembrane portion uh, that you saw in the previous slide to then show them off to the rest of the immune system. So again, they're um, presenting them for interaction with other cells. So dendritic cells are what's referred to as professional antigen presenting cells because they're always patrolling. Um, they're also involved in sampling microbes at the skin and mucosal surfaces. They engulf the microbes and then digest them and present those epitopes on their surfaces on those MHC complexes. So again, I so there's different processes depending upon um, whether or not those are endogenous or exogenous. But at this point, you may want to stop and go and look in your mastering at the two types of um, just an overview, first of all, on antigen processing and presentation. So antigen presenting cells, things that have engulfed a microbe, um, an extracellular microbe, and then are going to show off what they found. Um, others arising from an infected cell, perhaps a virus. So we're going to start with exogenous antigens. So again, exogenous antigens are going to arise from pathogens that do not directly infect cells, but rather remain outside of cells and then get recognized by phagocytes, macrophages and neutrophils, for example, and dendritic cells. So those are phagocytosed. And once within the cell, so this is the first step here, the exogenous pathogen is internalized into a phagosome. So the phagosome arises here. Um, and inside the phagosome, it's not shown here, but the phagosome then fuses with a lysosome that contains uh, chemicals that destroy the microbe and digest them, break them into smaller parts. So that part isn't shown here. But once the organism is broken up, so we see into subunits, at this point, this vesicle fuses with another vesicle inside the cytoplasm of the phagocyte. Once those fuse together, then the small subunits, these are now the epitopes, okay, so broken down portions of some type of molecule present on that pathogen. Then those get loaded onto, in this case, the MHC2 protein. Um, to form an MHC2 protein epitope complex. Once those are loaded, okay, because this is a membrane vesicle, all it has to do is fuse with a cytoplasmic membrane. This is much like the process of exocytosis. Um, and once those two membranes fuse, now these MHC molecules are present on the outside of the cell um, and being projected away and available for interaction with other cells. So again, this is exogenous antigens, and it starts with phagocytosis by a professional antigen-presenting cell, or APC. Well, how does that differ from a cell that, say, gets infected by a virus? How does the um, immune system know that a virally infected cell is uh, in the body, right? Because the virus is inside the cell, and it cannot, it's not recognizing necessarily an external pathogen. So that's outlined in this slide here, um, endogenous antigens. This can occur in fact a present, presentation of the um, on MHC1 complexes that we'll see here occurs in all nucleated cells. So just pretend this is an epithelial cell. It's been infected um, by a virus. Maybe an intestinal virus has entered the cell uh, inside the cell, inside the cytoplasm. So again, it has not been phagocytosed. You want to make that distinction. Um, this is not a phagocyte. A virus has infected the cell, um, but the cell has um, been able to break apart uh, some component of that virus into smaller portions. Proteases, for example, will degrade proteins. The small peptides then, or epitopes, are transported into the lumen of the endoplasmic reticulum. And it's within the ER, you'll see here that there are MHC1 proteins that are waiting to be loaded 
with the um, epitopes that have just been um, transported to the inside here. So as those get loaded on <coughs> in the endoplasmic reticulum, the next stop is the Golgi apparatus. And inside the Golgi, the vesicles then pinch off. So now this vesicle is free in the cytoplasm in MHC1, in the blue, in the epitopes, in the green here. Those fuse with the cytoplasmic membrane, much like in the example in the previous slide. And now we have the MHC1 protein epitope complexes, which are on the outside of the cell surface. So again, the major point at this point, how far have we come in the infection? There's been some sort of invasion in the case of a bacterium, an extracellular pathogen. In this example, a phagocyte has engulfed it, digested it, and then taken the various parts of the microbe and presented them on the surface of the phagocyte using the MHC2 complex. In contrast, an endogenous antigen arises from some sort of intracellular infection, in this case possibly a virus, but digestion occurs, the epitopes get loaded onto, in this case, MHC1, but the destination is the same. Um, they get inserted into the outside of the infected cell. So at this point, the immune system would know that there's an infection taking place, and we'll see how it responds to it. There are several videos, uh, animations in your mastering that you'll want to look at at this point. So take a break from uh, listening to me and maybe go look at um, this one on antigen processing and presentation. This one here is the endogenous, if you can tell, pathway. Um, this one here is a phagosome, so this would be antigen processing and presentation on MHC2. So take a look at those, and then we'll pick up with the T lymphocytes.